Today we're looking at how scientists have sequenced the legendary extinct direwolf DNA. If you're new to this channel, welcome. This is Mr. Singularity, where we explore the scientific and technological breakthroughs shaping the future as we know it. The legendary extinct direwolf that prowled through Los Angeles and elsewhere in the Americas more than 11 million years ago was a distinct species from the slightly larger gray wolf. The report, which sheds light on the mystery that biologists have been pondering for more than 100 years. The terrifying direwolf, the legendary symbol of Los Angeles and La Brea tar pits, has earned its place among the many large, unique species that were extinct by the end of the Pliocene era. The Pliocene, generally known as the Ice Age, ended around 11,700 years ago. More than 4,000 direwolves have been excavated from the La Brea tar pits, but scientists have no understanding of their evolution or the explanations for their eventual disappearance. Grey wolves, also found in the fossil-rich pits, have lived to this day. Direwolves have always been an icon of the last ice age in the Americas, but what we know about their evolutionary history has been limited to what we can see from the size and shape of their bones. Now these bones are showing a lot more. Using cutting-edge molecular approaches to the study of five direwolf genomes from fossil bones from 13,000 to 50,000 years ago, researchers were able to recreate the evolutionary history of the long-extinct carnivores for the first time. Significantly, there was no proof of gene transfer between direwolves and either North American gray wolves or coyotes. The lack of any genetic transference suggests that the bad wolves have evolved in isolation from the other Ice Age ancestors of these other animals. We also found that the direwolf is not closely related to the gray wolf. It also revealed that the direwolf never interbred with the gray wolf. The ancestors of the gray wolf and the much smaller coyote originated in Eurasia and are believed to have migrated to North America less than 1.37 million years ago, relatively recently in evolutionary time. On the other hand, the dire wolf, based on its genetic diversions from those animals, is now thought to have originated in the Americas. When they began this research for the first time, they assumed that the dire wolves were just beefed up gray wolves. So they were shocked to discover how extraordinarily genetically different they were, so much so that they definitely couldn't interbreed. This must mean that dire wolves had been isolated in North America for a very long time to become so genetically distinct. Dire wolves are often depicted as legendary creatures, giant wolves prowling desolate frozen landscapes, but the truth is much more fascinating. The dire wolf was a lone wolf when it came to breeding. Interbreeding is very common among wolf lineages when their geographical range overlaps. Modern gray wolves and coyotes, for example, have also been interbreeding in North America. Yet the researchers, using a data collection that included a Pliocene dire wolf, 22 North American gray wolves and coyotes, and three ancient dogs, found that the dire wolf had not interfered with any of the others, probably because it was genetically unable to reproduce with those animals. They found no evidence of gene flow between the direwolves and the gray wolves or coyotes, despite the substantial overlap during the late Pliocene, suggesting that the common ancestor of the gray wolves and coyotes was likely to develop in geographical isolation from the members of the direwolf lineage. This result is consistent with the assumption that the direwolves originated in the Americas. Another theory of the direwolf, one untested in the current study, concerns its extinction. It is generally believed that because of its body size, greater than the gray wolves and coyotes, the dire wolf was more experienced in hunting big prey and could not survive the disappearance of its usual food sources. Maybe the dire wolf's inability to interbreed did not provide the necessary new features that might have allowed them to survive. While the dire wolf sequence in this study had no descent from gray wolves, coyotes, or their recent North American ancestry, a comparison of the DNA of dire wolves and that of gray wolves, coyotes, and a wide range of other wolf-like species showed a similar yet distinct evolutionary relationship. The ancestors of the dire wolves probably diverged from those gray wolves more than 5 million years ago. It was a great surprise to discover that this divergence occurred so early. This finding highlights how special and unique the legendary dire wolf was. Based on their genomic analyses, the researchers have concluded that there are three primary lineages with common ancestry. Dire wolves, African jackals, and a group of all other existing wolf-like animals, including the gray wolf. Gray wolves, which live today mainly in the wilderness and isolated areas of North America, are more closely related to African wild dogs and Ethiopian wolves than to dire wolves. The research was the first to ever publish genome-wide data on dire wolves. The genomic analysis focused on both the nuclear genome and the mitochondrial genome, which is abundant in ancient remains. The reduced cost of sequencing analyses, in addition to the state-of-the-art molecular biology methods for highly degraded samples, helps us to retrieve DNA from fossils. Ancient DNA genomic analyses are an amazing tool to better understand the evolutionary history of ancient and extinct animals. What's your take on this? Let me know in the comments below and check out one of these other videos. This has been Mr. Singularity, and I'll see you in the next one.